according to your word in Psalm 103 from verse 1. Lord, we bless you. We bless you, Father, with our soul, with our mind, our will, our emotions, everything inside of us. We bless you. We bless you, Lord, and we do not forget all your benefits. We do not forget the wonderful things that you have done for us. We do not forget your grace. We do not forget your favor. We do not forget your loving kindness. We do not forget your glory. We do not forget, Father, what you have shown us, oh God, the mercy you have shown us. We bless you, the one who has forgiven all our iniquities. We bless you, the one who has healed all all our diseases. We want to say thank you this morning, Jehovah Rafika, our healer. Thank you for healing the diseases of the mind, the diseases of the soul, the diseases of the physical body. Thank you for healing us in every dimension. You are our healer and we worship you this morning. Oh Lord, thank you. You have redeemed our life from destruction. Thank you this morning that we are the redeemed of the Lord. We have been redeemed from destruction. When destruction has come at us, Lord, your mighty hand has pulled us out of that power of the enemy. We say thank you for redeeming us from destruction. Lord, we are grateful for all the times you have rescued us. Every single time, Lord, when we could have been destroyed, when we could have been, Lord Jehovah, killed, your mercy redeemed us from destruction. Thank you for not allowing the enemy to prevail over us. We are grateful this morning. We say thank you. Lord, thank you for crowning us with loving kindness and tender mercy season that this morning even as we've come again to bless your name to pray to you father thank you that we are crowned we are wearing a crown of loving kindness thank you that lord we have access to your tender mercies your mercy lord that is for us your mercy that is with us every season every time we say thank you for satisfying our mouths with good things so that our youth is renewed like that of an eagle. Thank you this morning that we have not lacked any good thing. You have been our provider, our lifter of our heads. You've supplied all our needs. Everything we have needed, oh God, you have supplied. You have provided. You have been good to us. You have renewed our youth. Lord, we worship you this morning. We extol your name this morning. Bless the Lord, all my soul. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenty us in mercy. Thank you this morning that you're merciful to us, gracious God. That Lord, you are slow to angry or to become angry. We say thank you, Lord, for you are plenteous in mercy. You will not always chide, neither will you keep your anger forever. You have not dealt with us according to our sins, nor regarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is your mercy towards us who fear you. As far as the east is from the west, so far have you removed our transgressions from us. Lord, like a father pities his children. Lord, you pity those who fear you, for you know our frame. You remember that we are dust. We want to say thank you this morning that you have remembered our that we are dust. You have remembered who we are. We thank you, mighty God. You have been faithful to us. We glorify your name. Bible says in, in that Psalm 103 verse 17, he says, but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness to his children's children, to such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Father, we thank you for your mercy that is from everlasting to everlasting your mercy that never ends your mercy that can never Lord come to a stop we are grateful this morning that we are the recipients of your mercy oh we bless your name we bless you Jehovah God we extol your name for you have done wondrous things for us you have done marvelous things for us we return the glory to you this morning when we look at ourselves this morning that Lord you have shown us mercy we worship you we honor you we are grateful for the grace you have shown us. Uh, we are grateful, Father. You have delivered us uh, out of the pit. Uh, 
and brought us, Lord, uh, even into this place uh, where we can be partakers uh, of your glory, where we can be partakers uh, of your marvelous light. Uh, oh, we worship you, Jehovah God. Uh, oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, Heavenly Father, we receive mercy this morning that triumphs over judgment. Any judgments that have been made against us, Father, we receive deliverance by the blood of Jesus. We receive great grace. We receive mercy that is able to disentangle us from every satanic entanglement. We thank you for your mercy that is able to untangle the works of the devil in our lives, in our families, in our children. We receive mercy this morning that is able to do a new thing in our lives, that is able to give us a new beginning this morning. Father, we receive mercy. We receive mercy. Let mercy, O oh God, be applied to every sin, every transgression, every iniquity in our lives, in our bloodlines. We receive mercy. You have have shown us your mercy Yahweh this morning we receive it with graciousness Lord with with joy with 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 oh God all kinds of appreciation for what you've done for us that you've not left us to our sins but you've made a way of escape. You made a way out for us. Lord, thank you this morning that all of us here are the recipients of your mercy. That mercy has triumphed over judgment. Lord, whatever accusations have been leveled against us in the, in the courts of heaven, in the spirit realm, every voice that is standing in accusation against us. Thank you that the blood of Jesus answers those voices. Thank you, Lord. We have no righteousness of our own. We have many failures and many ways, oh God, where we have transgressed but we thank you this morning that you are not counting it against us all you want from us is faith in the finished work of the cross and so we say thank you father for the finished work of the cross thank you jesus thank you holy spirit that this morning by reason of oh lord jesus your death and your resurrection we have been shown mercy and so this morning we answer every accusation against us our children our spouses our bloodlines with the blood of jesus let the blood speak for us this morning we invoke the testimony many of the blood. Uh, let the blood that speaks louder than the blood of Abel begin to testify righteousness over us. Uh, righteousness uh, that comes by faith in the finished work of the cross. Uh, we receive it this morning. Uh, thank you for cleansing us in every dimension. Thank you for purifying our hearts uh, and renewing a right spirit in us. Uh, oh, we worship you. Let's just worship him, uh, the King of glory. Hallelujah to his name. Uh, he is worthy. He is worthy for all he has done for us. Uh, he deserves the praise. Good morning again, brethren. I want us to go to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 1. Um, and I'll just skip read in that chapter 1. The Bible says this is the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And then it tells us that the, the bloodline in verse 3, it says, Judah beget Pharez and Zara of Tamar. And we remember that Tamar was the daughter-in-law of Judah. And we remember that in the Old Testament, the Bible says, cursed is that man who would be sleeping with his daughter-in-law. But here they are in the genealogy of Jesus. And then we get to verse 5. And Shalman beget Boaz of Rehab. And here in the King James, it's spelled as Rechab. Rechab is another name that the Bible gives to Egypt and Egypt represents the world and everything that God hates. When we read about Egypt in the Old Testament, it represents a system that God hates. And sometimes Rechab is the name that is used for the spirit of wasting, you know, like a principality, a demonic power. Salmon beget Boaz with a demonic principality. And then Boaz beget Obed of Ruth and then Obed beget Jesse. And then Jesse beget David the king and David the king beget Solomon from her that had been the wife of Uriah. The Bible doesn't even say Bathsheba. It doesn't even say um, David's wife Bathsheba. It says her who has been the wife of Uriah. In other words, in the realm of the spirit. Her marriage to David wasn't recognized. She had a husband, Uriah, that David murdered. And when you look at this, you're like, God, thank you that my bloodline is not the only one that is messed up. It's not my only bloodline that was messed up, Lord. It's not my sister's bloodline alone that was messed up. Jesus himself came out of a messed up bloodline. 
But thank God the messed up bloodline did not mean the end of his destiny. God took care of it. God did this so that you and I will have confidence this morning that whatever has happened in our own genealogy, if we trace it back all the way to Adam and Eve, whatever has happened in our bloodline, God is able to redeem it. He looks beyond us. I want us this morning to ask the Holy Spirit and say, Spirit of God, you know my bloodline. You know my genealogy from my father's side, my mother's side, for those who are married from your spouse's side. God knows the secrets nobody has ever told you. God knows the genealogy all the way back to Adam and Eve. I want us to say to God this morning by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, I ask that you would x-ray my bloodline all the way back to Adam and Eve. Every point where there was a failure, every point where there was destruction, every point where the enemy tampered with this bloodline. I thank you that through Jesus Christ, my redeemer, my bloodlines are redeemed in every dimension. It is not going to stop me from receiving, from achieving my destiny. It will not stop my children. It will not stop my spouse. Every place where the bloodlines have been messed up this morning, Lord, we lift it up to you. You know everything. Father, trace my genealogy back to Adam and Eve. Every point Lord, where there was a failure, where there was error, where there was a mistake, where there was demonic failings, oh God. Father, I am asking that you visit each of those points this morning and you redeem by the precious blood of Jesus. Let there be divine redemption. Father God, if Judah could have a child with his daughter-in-law and that child still live and fulfill his destiny in the genealogy of Christ. Father, which child in my family ought to die when Judah's own were saved? Because you are a merciful God, we receive your mercy this morning. Father, check out our bloodlines in the name of Jesus all the way back to Adam and Eve. Any point that the devil wants to use against us, Lord, we are asking in Jesus' name. Father, trace our bloodlines all the way back to Adam and Eve. Any place, Lord, where there's been a messing up, where there's been any error that Satan and his agents are using as a legal ground to resist us, to oppose us, uh, to stop us from enjoying the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Father, visit those bloodlines this morning and transform us. Uh, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Almighty God, for visiting our bloodlines from our father's side, our mother's side, our spouse's side, oh God, their father's side, their mother's side. Thank you for redeeming every error in their history. Thank you for redeeming, oh God, every failure in their history. Thank you, Father, by the blood of Jesus, we are redeemed. Our children, our children's children will enjoy the goodness of the Lord uh, in the land of the living. None of us will walk in bloodline errors. None of us will walk in repetition of failures of the generations uh, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Bible says in verse 3 that you remember Judah had Pharez with and Zara of Tamar, his daughter-in-law. I want us to pray that in any of our families, especially with our young people, wherever there's sexual sin, may God redeem us. May there be purity in our bloodlines. May God redeem us from sexual sin. Everything that celebrates sex outside the boundaries of God, may God redeem this morning. We want to even pray in advance for even our our smallest children, that Father God, none of them will be defiled. They will walk in the covenant that you have ordained. None of them will have sexual relations that are outside your purposes, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray. Father, this morning, we know you are the one who redeems. We can see Judah, Pharez, and Zara and Tamar in your genealogy. This is to tell us you are able to redeem people from the impact of sex outside your boundaries. Judah slept with his daughter-in-law. Father, has there been any in incest in our bloodlines? Has there been any rape in our bloodlines? Has there been any prostitution in our bloodlines? Has there been anything, Lord, outside the will and the purposes of God, any sexual sin, any adultery, any fornication? Father, we pray this morning, redeem our bloodlines from evil. Redeem us by the power in the blood of Jesus. Redeem us from evil. Every form of sexual sin, Father, redeem. We pray for purity in our bloodlines. That, Lord, our children, our children children, all of them will live according to the principles of God. They will express 
their sexuality in the way that you want them to express it in the name of Jesus. Father, redeem them. Clothe them with garments of, of, of righteousness, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let there be no evil cycles of sexual sin in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Bible says, shall man beget Boaz of Rehab, Rehab, Rehab. We're going to ask God any way, Lord, in our families that we have joined ourselves to worldliness and the systems of the world. We are asking, redeem us. Salmon beget Boaz with Rehab. He joined himself to um, a system of the world, let's say, prophetically speaking, uh, a system that wastes, a system that wastes people's destiny. Yet God redeemed that and there was no wastage. Let's ask God, Father, Lord, any way, in any way, we have joined ourselves to evil systems. Lord, my husband, my children, myself, any way we have joined ourselves to evil systems. Today, Lord, redeem us. Let there be no wasting. Any way the spirit of wasting has been introduced into our homes, into our lives, into our destinies. May there be no destiny that is wasted. Father, in the name of Jesus, redeem us from that spirit of wasting. Lord, any wasting Lord, Lord, whoever in our families is wasting away. Their destiny is wasting because they are not living the life you ordained for them. They are not doing what you asked them to do. We pray in Jesus' name. Redeem them from wasting in the name of Jesus. Whoever is wasting their divine opportunities, wasting the grace of God on their lives and walking a different path from what you have ordained king of glory we pray for redeeming power this morning to touch them lord let your power touch me let your power touch each and every one of us in the name of Jesus, redeem us from wasting wherever we've joined ourselves to what we ought not to join ourselves with and is wasting our lives, wasting our destinies, wasting the grace of God upon us, wasting the grace of God upon our children, upon our children's children. Oh Lord, intervene and deliver us from the spirit of wasting. In the mighty name of Jesus, let no destinies be wasted. Father, anyone connected to us, by blood, by marriage, by covenant of the blood of Jesus. Anyone connected to us, Lord, in covenant relationships, we pray, redeem them from any wasting of destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And then we saw there the account of David who had Solomon with the wife of another man. And we know that later on, Solomon really struggled with sexual sin. He, his father had just done a little bit, but he went over and ab above, you know, let's ask God, father, wherever two things in our families, there's been murder. You know, sometimes there are secrets we don't get to know about. Maybe somebody in our bloodlines has killed someone at one point or the other. And it was a secret. Nobody knew. I remember once you know, um, a member of my family told me about a, a relative, an old, an old lady within our family. I can't name the relationship, but this woman apparently, um, had had an affair, you know, in our country, there were, there were a lot of, uh, white people. So obviously she was black, married to a black man and then had an affair with a white man who was their neighbor or something. And then gave birth to a child who was obviously white, not black. And because she knew this and the child, you know, initially black kids, when they are born, they have this hair, you know, that looks almost like white kids' hair. But over time, you know, if they are black, black, you know, they look black. So anyway, over time, the, the child started to look like the white man next door or whatever. And apparently she killed her own child. She killed the child because she didn't want the scandal to grow, you know. So you can imagine, we don't know the things that have happened in our bloodlines. I want us to pray. David killed Uriah. Who would have thought David would just become a murderer? He had a good heart, you know, but things can happen. I want us to pray just in case in our bloodlines from now all the way back to Adam and Eve. Has there been anyone who killed people? Have there been any murders that Satan would want to stand upon and use as an excuse to cause trouble? Let's ask God. Father God, redeem us from any shedding of innocent blood. Lord, 
God in our bloodlines from our father's side, our mother's side, our spouse's father's side, their mother's side. Lord, has anyone shed innocent blood? Uh, is anyone guilty in our bloodlines of murder? Lord, of taking life. Lord, we are pleading the blood of Jesus this morning. We pray for mercy. Redeem our bloodlines from the impact of murder, from the consequences of death. Has anyone been killing, whether a child, a baby, an adult? Father God, we are praying for mercy. Redeem us in the name of Jesus. Redeem us, O God, from that sin of murder. Any place that the devil would use this as legal ground. Father, we pray for redemption this morning by the power in the name of Jesus. Let there be life and life in abundance. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. And then let us pray. We saw that Solomon took womanizing to another level. You know, let's ask God that, Lord, wherever my parents failed, wherever I have failed, Lord, I am putting a stop to it. It will not move on to my children, my children's children with vengeance. No, I am putting a stop to it by the blood of Jesus. Lord, even I myself refuse to fail the failures of my parents. And I refuse for my children to fail my failures in the name of Jesus. Lord, by the power in the blood of Jesus, redeem us from the errors of the previous generation. We will not replay those evil cycles. Lord, where my father failed, where my mother failed, I refuse to fail their failure. In the name of Jesus, Lord, where I have failed, I refuse for my children to walk through those footsteps of failure. In the name of Jesus, Lord, redeem every failure by the blood of Jesus. Redeem us, O God, redeem us, King Jesus, redeem us, Lord from every cycles of failure, anything, Lord, uh, that could be causing us, Lord, uh, to fall beneath uh, the standard of the expectation. Lord, redeem us. We, When we look at our children, we will not cry and say, I did the same thing. Oh no, Father God, we want them to only grow in grace. We want our children to walk in cycles of grace, mercy, and favor in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Romans 4. Romans 4, it says in verse 3, For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. He believed God, and there was a credit put in his account in heaven, a credit that said righteous. When we believe God, it is counted to us as righteousness. He says in verse 5, to him that works not, the one who's not saying I'm going to be righteous by my own works, to him that works not, but believes on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. I want us to pray this morning. I don't know, do you believe God? Like, Lord, I have faith in you. I believe in you. Therefore, I receive a credit of righteousness to my bloodline. That this bloodline is a bloodline of righteousness. I receive credit because God is able to, to even pronounce that my female relative who strangled their own child. God is even able to pronounce them righteous for my sake. So that this bloodline no longer looks messed up in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray to Father. Father, this morning we believe in you. We have faith in you. And the Bible says when we believe you, when we believe that you have cleansed us, when we believe that there is a new beginning in our lives, when we believe that you have done a new thing in us, that it is credited unto us as righteousness. This morning, Lord, our faith is righteousness and we are grateful this morning. We are grateful this morning. We receive righteousness this morning. We receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I receive it in Jesus' name. I receive it for all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. When we go to Hebrews 11, you know, we see there, the hall of fame for the people who walked in faith. And you'll be surprised at some of the names. When we see somebody like Noah, that God says, Noah is the heir of righteousness by faith. That Noah was a God-fearing man. And then you'll be thinking, but Noah got drunk. He was busy drinking the grapes that he was planting. And then he got naked. And then he was cursing his son. 
The faith of Noah cancels out all those other things. Uh, the, as far as God is concerned about Noah, Noah is a righteous man because Noah moved by faith to build the ark. And then you look at some of these people, you know, Sarah, Bible says by faith, she received strength to conceive seed and deliver a child. But we know when God told Sarah she was going to have a baby that she laughed and it wasn't the laugh of joy. It was like a ridicule, ridiculing laugh, like for crying out loud, God, for real, for real. You know, am I really at this age at 90 going to be having kids? You know, she laughed. But God here is saying faith worked in Sarah's womb. God didn't mention the laugh anymore. And then he says all of them died in faith. I want us to pray this morning that Lord, I receive faith this morning that cancels out all my failures. Remember, we were singing. He looks beyond us. I receive that faith that cancels out all my failures and, 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 and catapults me to the center of divine destiny this morning. Wherever I ought to be this morning, by faith I receive the wind of the Spirit to carry me to the center of destiny in the name of Jesus. By faith, Lord, I thank you that you are canceling out every failure. Every place, Lord, where I have failed, where I've had a lapse in judgment, where I've had a lapse, oh God, of my senses, where my spiritual antenna was not working properly. Lord, I receive the faith that catapults me to the center of destiny so that, Lord, I enter the spiritual hall of fame by faith, by faith and not works, by faith and not works this morning. Lord, we come, oh God, into that place where failures are canceled, where failures are not remembered anymore. Merika zuva kuza balagada reke kebo su tende le baba uria kaso preke dele bosi Maria kado so preke dele bosi Marika kaka boso tondo lobo in the name of Jesus Thank you Father in Jesus mighty name we pray Amen We know the Bible said faith without works is dead Faith without works is dead Noah by faith began to build an ark yet he had never seen the rain. He had never seen rain. He had never seen a flood. So he was building an ark to prepare for something that he had never ever seen. Something that he didn't even have a mental picture of. He, he didn't have any clue about what rain looked like. But he built the ark and God honored him for that. You and I, I want us this morning, look into your heart. What is that prayer point you need to pray? That maybe you are cautious about or you've shelved because it looks like it's mind blowing. It looks like, ah, can this really happen? Yes, it can. Noah got the ark ready and then God brought the rain. The rain wasn't going to come until the ark was ready. Imagine if Noah never built the ark. God waited for them to finish the ark, to enter the ark, and then he sealed them inside before the rain comes. And that tells me that, look, God, there are certain breakthroughs. I'm not going to see until I start building the ark. I need to first of all, take those first steps, the step of faith. You want that job. You think, okay, I'm not qualified for it. So what? Go and apply first until you apply. How can God make a way? Let's begin to pray this morning concerning those things that are like an ark to us this morning that we need to take a step of faith. Holy Spirit, I receive great grace this week. I receive great grace to take that step of faith. Lord, I, we know in the realm of the spirit for us Christians, there is no leap in the dark. For us Christians, it's not a leap in the dark. It's a walk of faith. We are walking in the light, trusting God, taking him at, at his word because our father is more than enough. Nothing that he cannot do. So this morning, Father, I receive, oh God, the grace to get up and begin to build my ark. That thing that I need to do for you, Lord, to complete the miracle, I rise up and I do it. I receive the grace. Lord, I won't postpone it. I will not postpone it. My brothers and sisters in Christ, they will not postpone it. Whatever we need to do in this month, oh God, we receive grace to rise up and do it. In the name of Jesus, we receive grace. Lord, empower us, every one of us on this prayer line, to get up and do those things that we have shelved or we have become afraid of. Lord, you are able to do a new thing. We bless your name. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. When we look at Sarah, Bible says, Sarah received strength by faith. To conceive seed. 
It was the faith that prepared the womb. The womb that had gone beyond menopause. I don't even know what you would call it at this time. Whether the womb is atrophied, I don't know. But she had gone beyond the, the, the human uh, possibilities of conception. But faith caused that womb to receive strength to conceive a seed. You know, we also have spiritual wombs as well that can conceive the seed. What is the seed? The seed is the word of God. Our wombs can conceive that seed and then that seed can bring about a miracle that you don't even expect. I want to read for us in Isaiah 61 11 before we take the prayer point. It says, for as surely as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring forth. So surely the Lord God will cause rightness and justice and praise to spring forth before all the nations through the self-fulfilling power of his word. His word has a self-fulfilling power. When I get my faith ready, the seed comes to connect with the womb of my faith. And then the word of God has a self-fulfilling power. It will conceive, it will bring forth the miracle in the name of Jesus. I want us to begin to pray this hour. Lord, I receive that seed. Whatever seed that you want to receive, you want healing, receive the word of God that says by his stripes we are healed. Oh, you want breakthrough, receive the seed of the word that says uh, for this reason the son of God was made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Let the seed conceive in the womb of your faith and let there be a manifestation because the seed which is the word of God has a self-fulfilling power inside of it it has a self-fulfilling power I don't need to make it fulfill itself the word is already wired to be fulfilled all I need to do is receive it in my womb the womb of faith as I receive it this morning the word knows what to do the word goes ahead and fulfills itself I don't need to make it work I don't need to work it the word works itself oh lama Father Lord, I thank you this morning. Let your word fall upon fertile ground. Let nobody on this prayer line be a stony hearted person. Nobody will be that word that fell by the thorns that was choked by the cares of life and anxieties. Nobody will be like the, the stony ground. Oh, nobody will be like that word that fell by the wayside. But let the word fall into fertile wombs this morning. By faith, we receive, oh God, an incubation of the word of God. The word that is a self fulfilling power. The word that is able to bring itself to pass. I receive the word. I receive the word this morning. Lord Jesus, you came to destroy the works of the devil. Let the works of the devil be destroyed in our lives this morning. We receive your word. Whatever is not of God, whatever doesn't represent God, let it be destroyed right now this minute. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we receive your word. We receive your word. We incubate your word this morning. May our spiritual oh god wombs receive the word incubate the deliverance incubate oh god the transformation incubate the promotion i receive it lord in the womb of my spirit in the name of jesus thank you father in jesus mighty name we pray amen in talking about abraham you know the bible said something about him that when we go back to that romans chapter 4 it says, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickens the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. Abraham, against hope, believed in hope. In other words, the situation was hopeless. Against hope, he, believed, he hoped in a hopeless situation. That he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. Remember that word. That word was spoken and the word is a self-fulfilling power. And he says he was not weak in faith and did not consider his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old. Neither did he consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able to perform. Child of God, this morning, are you fully persuaded that God is quickening the things that are dead and calling the things that are not as though they were? 
What, you know, in other words, what, what doesn't exist on planet earth as you are praying, God is calling it into manifestation. It's coming into existence. Even as you are speaking, it's coming into existence. God quickens the dead and calls those things which are not as though they were. He brings them to manifestation. Can you believe God like Abraham this morning? Let's go ahead and begin to trust him. Father, this morning, ha, I'm so grateful for this testimony. Oh God, God, thank you for quickening even the dead, even the things that look like they are beyond deliverance. Thank you, Lord, for doing a new thing. Lord, I thank you that you have called those things which are not as though they were. Father, yes, in the realm of the natural, it looks like this situation is bad. But I thank you that right now, spiritually, as I'm praying, Lord, there is a turnaround and this situation is great. And I celebrate you, Lord, on this first Sunday of the month. I worship you for the turnaround, for what you have done, Lord, the great works, the mighty works, the marvelous works. I thank you, Lord. This child may look like they're going a different way. But Lord, I call the things that are not as though they were. Thank you for that child who's behaving greatly. Thank you for that child who's doing things we are proud of. Thank you, Father. Oh, Labrador Sopre Gedelebosia. Father, we thank you. I thank you for those marriages on this prayer line, Lord, uh, that you are calling the dead to life uh, and calling the things that be not as though they were. Thank you, Father. Oh, Rabba Seketeleba. We thank you, Lord, uh, for those who were sick that, Lord, are healed. Uh, thank you, Father. We will not waver. We hope uh, against hope. Uh, yes, this morning, uh, we hope in the hopeless situations because the power of God is able to transform it uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh, Rabba Seketeleba. We don't consider our limitations. We don't consider what we don't have on our CV. But we consider that our God has empowered us, has enabled us, has qualified us. Yes, Lord, we put in those applications. Oh, Lord, oh, we thank you for open doors. We go knocking on the door. We go knocking on the door because we believe you've opened a way. You have promoted us, oh God. We are not at the same level. You have done a new thing. We are fully persuaded. We are fully persuaded that what you promised, you are able to do in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus name. As we round up, brethren, let's just quickly begin to pronounce blessings upon ourselves because this is what we are trusting God for, his word to prosper in our lives. Let's use Deuteronomy 28 and pronounce all those blessings upon ourselves, upon our families, our households in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you for the blessings you have released to us in Deuteronomy 28 from verse 2, Lord. We are grateful that these blessings shall come upon us this morning. They will overtake us this morning as we hearken to the voice of the Lord our God. We are blessed in the city. We are blessed in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of our body. Every child we've given birth to is blessed. Whatever, Lord, we work at with our own hands, it is blessed. Blessed is the fruit of our labor. Every place where we work, we call our places of work blessed. We call our businesses blessed. Any place where we are working, we call it blessed. Blessed is the fruit, oh God, of our professional jobs, of every job that we are doing. Blessed is the business that we are doing. Lord, there is increase in everything we are doing. Everything, our bank accounts are in increase. There will be no credit cards, no overdrafts. We receive increase on every dimension. Blessed is our storehouse and our basket. Our bank accounts are blessed. Our savings accounts are blessed. Our investments are blessed in the name of Jesus. We are blessed when we come in. We are blessed, oh God, when we go out. The Lord will cause our enemies that rise up again us to be smitten before our faces. They will come out against us in one way and they will flee before us in seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon all our storehouses, all our bank accounts, everything we have, including the pantries in our kitchen. God will command a blessing upon us. In all that our hand sets to do, God has commanded a blessing upon us. The Lord has blessed us in the land which the Lord has given us. The Lord has established us as holy people to himself. He has sworn to us that as we walk in his ways, he is blessing us. As we continue to have faith in the finished work of the cross, we are blessed. All the people of the earth shall see that we are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of us. 
The Lord shall make us to be plenteous in goods. We will be plenty in the fruit of our body. Lord, our bank accounts will be plenteous. Our savings accounts will be plenteous. Everything we do will be plenteous. The Lord has blessed us. The Lord shall open unto us his good treasure. He will open the heavens to us and give us the rain in its season. He will bless all the works of our hands. We shall lend to many nations and we shall not borrow. The Lord has made us the head and not the tailor. We shall be above only and we shall never be beneath in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name forevermore. We receive all these blessings by faith in the finished work of the cross and your word in Matthew 7, 7. You said, ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. You said, Lord, whoever asks will receive. Whoever seeks will find. Whoever knocks, the door shall be opened unto them. Father, we believe this word. And this morning we receive, oh God, a great miraculous turnaround in the name of Jesus. We are blessed and highly favored in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen.